Hi friends, once again I welcome you guys to the Make IT Simple YouTube channel. In my last couple of videos, I explained about how a dockerized application will get deployed into AWS ECS in two different projects. One is a simple Hello World project with a single image container and another one is a Lago framework application which has multiple image containers like web, app and DB images. And also I explained how these images would build and push to the production environment repository which is AWS ECR Elastic Container Repository through a CI-CD tool called GitHub Action. Now how could we test or build these images from our local system environment? Of course, we need to install the Docker in our local system. Installing a Docker in the Linux machine is so easy and it doesn't throw any issues over there. But installing Docker in Windows machine is a little bit complex and also our Windows system should meet some requirements like Windows subsystem for Linux should be installed, a 64-bit process should be there and a RAM size should be 4GB and in Windows feature, a hyper virtualization should be enabled. Even though if we install those prerequisites, we may face some issues in the nearby features. To overcome this kind of issues, we can make use of Oracle VirtualBox to install the Docker in our system and we can play with the Docker for our demo or POC or testing our application in the system. So in this video, I will explain about how to install the Docker in the Oracle VirtualBox. So for that, the prerequisites like we need to install the Oracle VirtualBox. In my system, I already have my Oracle VirtualBox. So those who doesn't have any uh, install the Oracle VirtualBox can install this Oracle VirtualBox from their official website through this Windows Host EXE package. And then we can install the Alpen Linux image. It's a Linux distribution, which is a small, simple, and secure, and also lightweight Linux distribution. You can download it from the official website over here from the standard 64-bit architecture. Now let's go get into the video for how to in create a or create a new system, Oracle virtual system to install the Docker in it. Now uh, open this Oracle virtual box. In the left-hand side, it will list down all the machines whatever I have created over here. Now click on the click on new over here and the name you can give as per your reference. I can give like test jam 22 and demo I can give. And in the type you can choose as Linux. In the version you can choose the Linux 2.6 64-bit and click on next. The memory size you can choose as per your requirements. I can give like around 8, 8 GB over here and the next like hard disk and the hard disk type memory location we can let it be a default option here like you can click on here next and this here on next and file location and size you can click on next and now i created a machine and it will be getting listed on the left hand side now what you have to do is like you just before clicking on create new you need to do some network or uh, storage settings over here i'm clicking i am just clicking on it settings and in the storage i'm just clicking on this controller here i will be selecting the image which i have downloaded for the alpen linux from here you can choose a disk file if you are using the same uh, Alpine image for many machines, it will automatically pop it over here. So you can choose a disk file here and you can select the Alpine Linux image, whatever you downloaded here, and just click on open and give OK. Now you can let's start the machine over here. Once it is starting, it will ask for the startup disk to select. Let's see. Yeah, it will ask for a startup disk to select. Here I am giving the, the image whatever I selected, like Alpine standard and click on next. Now it will start booting. It will take some time and it will ask for the login. Now you can give the login here as like you can give root. And we need to set up the alpine. For that what we will give is like we need to give the command setup hyphen alpine. And it will ask for some configuration settings like it will ask for the keyboard layout. I can give like US and the variant as again US. And for some other settings, if you want, you can go with the default values. For the default values, you just give enter. Here, I, I don't want to give anything. I'm just giving the default values for IP address, for the network configurations. Everything I'm giving as the default values. And now it will be asking for the password. I'm setting up the new password for my system. Resetting the password. And it is asking for the time zone. By default, it will be UTC. If you want to know the list of time zone, you can just give question mark. It will list on the list of time zone. I'm going with Asia. And it will ask for sub time zone. Again, I don't know the sub time zone. I am going with the question mark. So it will list on all sub time zone. Now I am going with Kolkata as a sub time zone. And 
here for the rest of the questions like the proxy URL, I'm going the default values for the MTP client also, and it will start installing the machines over here. Now for mirror number also, I'm going with the default values, and it is updating a repository index. For this question also, I'm going with the default values, specific server, and it will ask for you which disk type you have to choose. Uh, we have given the system SGA, right? So I'm giving with SGA, and it will ask like how to use it. So we'll be going with the system based, like I'm going with, I'm typing as this. And now it will be start installing the complete packages. And it will ask for like here is the disk or not. Now let's see what will happen over here. Yeah, it will ask like here is the above disk and continue. I'm just giving yes. Now it will start the installing the packages. Now it will take depends upon the network uh, system in the in your system. It will take for two to five minutes. Let's see how long it will take. Yes, installation is complete now. It will take around five minutes in my system. Now after the installation, we need to reboot it. To reboot it, just type the command power off. Just give a power off from the command line. That's it. Now this is system is powered off. Now before starting it, we need to do some setting. Like suppose if you want to access this virtual machine from outside or like from your own system through some of the uh, client like mobile XTAM or putty or through some SSH client like uh, git bash means you want to do some settings. For that what you have to do is like again go to your settings and the network you need to change the network adapter to bridge. Then only you can able to access the virtual machine from your host machine, host means from your remote, from your local system. Now you can give bridge adapter and click on OK. And also like I forgot to mention the settings in the system, you can remove this floppy and off return because we have given the already installed OS in our system as not drives. So you don't need to give the floppy and optical, just give OK. Now we can start the machine. It will try to start the machine. Now we'll see like what will happen over here. It will be booted automatically. Yeah, it's, it, it started booted now. Now if you see it over here, this 172.20.10.6 is the IP machine of this virtual machine. Now you can start logging over here as a root and I have to give the password. Now to access the machine from the host system, we, more, we need to do one more thing. Like we need to change the SSH key config. SSH key is nothing but it's an open SSH server process, uh, which it will listen like our incoming connections using the SSH protocol and acts like a server of the protocol. So we need to change the settings over there. The settings file will be there in the UTC folder. Like you can open this file and edit it like v UTC slash and it will be in the SSH folder and SSH key under config file. If you open this one means it will open this file and there will be one key. You need to change the key. So I'll be maximizing this one. And here, I think the key will be like, yeah, this is a key. Permit root login. Permit root login public pa password is a key. Now it is commented one. We need to uncomment it. For that, we need to edit this file. To edit it, I'm just clicking on I. Now I'm removing this ash. Sorry. Permit and removing it ash. And at the end, instead of public password, I'm just giving yes. Now it will give the uh, permit the root login from the host system. I am saving this file by clicking on escape colon wq. It will save the file. That's it. Now what I am doing is like I need to restart this SSH that server process. For that I need to give the command service space SSH restart. That's it. It will be restarting the system. Now we can try uh, uh, the system from a local or through any of the clients like After restarting our 
SSD service. Now we can able to access this virtual system from a host system. For that we can use any of the application like Putty or Git Bash or Mobile XTERM. I am using Mobile XTERM as of now. So this is the Mobile XTERM exe. I am clicking on the session. For that I am going with SSH, SSH and it lasts for the remote host. For that I need to give the IP address. We actually noted the IP address during the start of the machine, start of the system, right? I am giving that IP address like 172.20.10.6. Sorry to give 172. Okay, just clicking on OK. It will log in as it will ask for a login. I am just giving root and it will just ask for the password. See, see, I am now I am able to log in this uh, virtual machine from my own system. Now, what we have to do is like we need to install the Docker. Before I will let you know, I am just giving the Docker command D O C K R Docker iPhone iPhone version. So Docker is not found here. So to install the Docker, what we do is like we need to uh, add the repositories in the APK folder. So I'm just opening the file ba etc slash APK folder the repositories. So see here some of the uh, links are commented mode. So we need to uncomment it. So I just uncommented it by removing the ash over there. Again to edit it, I need to click insert i. Just removing this uh, uncommented commented lines of repositories and just saving it over here. F here colon wq. That's it. Now what I am what I have to do is like to install the Docker. Just simple command apk add Docker. That's it. It will uh, start in, uh, installing the Docker now. Docker is installed successfully now. Now you can give the command docker iPhone iPhone version. It is not there. Docker version is there, but if you give docker ps or docker images to list down all the images, means it says like the docker demo is not running. So we need to start the docker. For that, what we need to give is like service docker start. That's it. Now my docker is running inside this host system, inside this virtual box. Now I am giving docker images, it says like it lists down all the images. I don't have any images, that's what it is not listing anything. And again I am giving docker ps, it will check whether what are the running containers in my machine. There is no machine. Now we can test it by running some nginx server. So for that what I am giving is like docker run iphone port. Port I can give some random port like 8989. That is a container port and the host port is 80. And I won't run in detached mode and the nginx server I need to run it. Okay, I think I did. Uh, yeah, it is. It is checking that nginx uh, image is not checking with that image. It is not there, and it is trying to pull this image from the Docker hub. Now let's see. It is pulling from there. Yes. Now the image is got downloaded, and we'll see Docker ps. We'll see whether any running images, running containers there or not. Yes, running containers there. To view that uh, application, how you have to do is like we need to view the application with the help of the IP address. Now let's go to our host system. We can browse that application with the help of our IP address 172.20.10.6. I can give HTTP colon and I need to give the port number like 8989. See here, it says like welcome to Nginx. Now the Nginx server is up and running now with the help of the tool. With the help of the images and another thing is like suppose i want to download the my repository what we can do with the help of git right i'm just making of git iphone iphone version again git is not found for that what i do is like just a simple command apk add git that's it it will try to install the git now and git is installed i am checking the git version it's there now we can use make use of the git clone command for this, this is my docker php is in a repository. I am just copying this URL. Now git clone giving this version means it just try to clone the code. That's it. You can see that uh, folder with the help of ls command docker php. Otherwise you, with the help of mobile xtrom you can able to see the folder here. Inside this root folder you can see the docker php and it's a folder 
we will have this code over here. The advantage of this mobile XROM is like we can able to view the folders like how we can able to see the Windows machine. So now that our Docker is up and running now. You can start playing with your Docker with the help of this virtual machine. That's it. Thank you guys.